Now what I've got here on the bench today is my control box for my uh, new CCTV system that I'm currently setting up here in my home and also having a camera here in the lab. Uh, it's just a basic one off Amazon that I picked up. Uh, it's got a one terabyte hard drive inside. I do want to look at upgrading that to a three terabyte one that I've got. Not sure how easy that is to do yet. Um, haven't looked into it, but the first thing I want to do is upgrade the antennas. Now, I do want to use this with one omnidirectional antenna and possibly a directional one as well, especially for uh, one of the cameras that are outside in my uh, yard and also uh, the camera here in the lab. I need a directional antenna to get uh, a decent signal from that one. And I also want uh, removable SMA, so I want proper SMA connectors on here so we can remove and uh, upgrade any antennas we want to in the future as well uh, at the moment these fixed ones they do look from the size of these look to be 5 db but you can never be too sure what's on the inside so i'm going to crack this open and look at uh, adding some sma connections to uh, this box to kind of take it up to the next level and it even if you use the same antenna as a 5db antenna, it just gives you options for the future to upgrade the antennas on this. Uh, you know, it's just, uh, I think it's, a, an, a, a, to be honest, if you saw more people doing this, um, more manufacturers doing this, and side by side you had this box with fixed antennas and they also sold one with SMA antennas um, or an SMA connection at the back, uh, let's say, I'm pretty sure they'll get more people clicking on that one than they would this one, uh, especially if it's, uh, you know, uh, another manufacturer that you're competing with, you know, having the SMAs on the back uh, so you can upgrade the antennas. I think that would be a better selling feature than uh, some of the other things they claim it can do. But uh, that's what we're going to do today, upgrade this so we can uh, add our own antennas. Now it's uh, pretty simple uh, on the inside really, I mean the box itself, uh, most of the uh, volume is taken up with the hard drive, but uh, the actual uh, gubbins, the uh, main board of this, is pretty small, there's not a great deal to it at all. Uh, we've got the two antennas here going to uh, high rows connectors, so that's going to make it really easy for us to upgrade. They have some glue on there holding them in place. So I'm going to have to get rid of that first. And we've got this other antenna going off to the front here. And at first I was looking at it and thinking, you know, what, what the hell is that? But uh, then it kind of occurred to me, it's obvious, this is the connection to the Wi-Fi. This is the connection for your uh, router. So you can actually uh, upload all this uh, to the cloud and control it with your smartphone. These two antennas are just... Uh, for the uh, video signal coming from the cameras. This single one here is going to your uh, router. And the single one down here is just a, a very, very simple antenna like you would get inside uh, a laptop. So we're definitely going to be upgrading that one as well. I completely forgot about the Wi-Fi one and there was just concentration on these two here. But uh, yeah, simple upgrade, no soldering. Uh, you just need to get uh, the uh, cables with the high rose connectors on. So here are the two high rose connectors for the uh, camera antennas then. You can probably make out now that I've got the macro lens on that they've got a little bit of glue on top that we're gonna have to scrape away. Uh, as I said in a previous video, these um, high rose connectors are very, very fragile. They're not designed to be continuously plugged in and unplugged again. They've got about, uh, been tested for about 50 insertions. Um, you're better off keeping that to a minimum. They're very, very fragile. But that's the two for the uh, camera antennas. And we come over here and we can see the one for the Wi-Fi antenna over there. Just a single one. Now when removing these and inserting them as well, you want to make sure that uh, you uh, insert them by pulling them directly upwards, not to the side or anything like that. So you don't want to be pulling the cable and ripping it out like this because uh, you can end up bending the connectors, the side walls of the connectors themselves. You want to try and, uh, you know, just make sure that you pull upwards and when you connect these in, just straight down. Uh, because these have got a little bit of glue on them, I've got some needle nose pliers here. And um, basically I'm just grabbing hold of the sides 
of the high rose connector now it's in focus again and I'm giving it a whittle from side to side to break the glue and then basically just give it a pull upwards like so and that way I've removed it and I haven't damaged the side walls of that and what I can do now is get in there and uh, get away get rid of any of this excess uh, glue that's still around there just get some tweezers and pull it out of the way but you want to be make really really sure that you don't bend those side walls now if you take a look at these little pigtails I've got as the uh, replacement it's an SMA connector with a couple uh, of oh sorry one uh, nut on there and it's made to go into a hole which is around uh, I'd say six millimeters seven millimeters in diameter and then bolt down now unfortunately because we've removed these antennas we've now got these gaping holes in here now i could drill new holes into the casing and mount these and just leave them as they are but uh, what i'm going to do is i've got these uh, black washers here and we can bolt the sma connector to these uh, black washers you can also use uh, metal washers if you want to and uh, what well as you can see what that does is uh, give you a greater circumference then and we can thread this through and I'm going to epoxy that over the hole there so that way we've blocked off the big hole we've got the SMA mounted so we can add new antennas to this and uh, it just looks more of a neater job but as I say you can drill a hole through the uh, case in there if you want to. Uh, just be really careful any metal shavings that uh, you blow them off the uh, circuit board before you power the unit back on again because that can cause damage. But uh, I think that's just a, a better way of doing it and it's going to look a lot neater and a little bit more professional I think. Now reconnecting these uh, high rose connectors um, it's pretty straightforward but as I said they are fragile you need to be very careful when uh, you reconnect these you want to uh, position it so you come in straight in from the top get it on the connector and then uh, a pencil with a rubber on the end is really good for applying uh, just enough force and you'll just hear a small click There we go, that's in place. Now, you may have noticed from the beginning that uh, when they assembled this uh, originally, they put glue on these. There's really no need to do that. They are a delicate connector, but once they're on, they're extremely strong. And I've got all the confidence that if you threw this box from a four-story building, it landed on the concrete, these connectors would still be in place. Of course, everything else will be damaged, but they will still be in place. So now that we've modified the uh, two receiving antennas on this unit, it's time to think about the uh, Wi-Fi, and we certainly want to upgrade the Wi-Fi uh, antenna. It's just a single antenna for the Wi-Fi. Uh, first thoughts, uh, you'll probably think, maybe drill a hole in the case here at the back and have it in between these two antennas, but I don't think that's a good idea. Um, these aren't transmitting, these two antennas here are only receiving. If they were transmitting, then you would have serious problems because it would act as a Wi-Fi jammer, uh, essentially. But um, I think what I'm going to do is mount my antenna on the front of the case so it's all nice and separate. Um, on the front of the case here, we've got a hole already here, which I can presume that, you know, maybe the next model up has some kind of uh, IR sensor remote control there that hole is a little bit too big so again we'd have to modify that with a washer and possibly some epoxy so i think i'm probably going to drill a hole in the middle of the case around this area here and mount the antenna at the front and there you go pretty straightforward modification drill a hole and then tighten it down so here we go modification finished pretty straightforward really just uh, drill holes Modify these uh, two holes on the back there. No soldering required whatsoever. Just buy the uh, correct length of uh, pigtail with the correct connector on the end there. And away you go. You're free now to uh, stick on any antennas you want on here, whether it be omnidirectional or directional. So here we are, everything uh, back together again. And now we've got lots of options that we can use uh, antenna-wise with this uh, particular unit 
major major upgrade well worth doing i mean uh, when you hack something or modify something um you normally do it either to get it to work properly or to get it to work better and uh, normally to get it to work better it gives you more options as well and with this modification it's definitely going to work better and it has given us some more options as well we've now got the wi-fi at the front with the antenna we can choose whatever kind of antenna we want on there whether it be omnidirectional like this one here or a directional one pointing directly at your router and uh, you know on the back here we've got uh, an omnidirectional one for the cameras and a directional one possibly have the directional one for some cameras that are a little bit further away the omnidirectional one for the uh, closer units this is the thing that i'm trying to put across as well is this was advertised to me with 5db omnidirectional antennas on the back for the cameras looking at the size of this you would assume it is a 5db directional uh, omnidirectional antenna but in reality this little thing is the same as one of these here uh, this is a 2.5 dB Wi-Fi antenna, exactly the same what's inside here as what's inside this one here. And if you uh, saw a picture over on Amazon or wherever you're going to buy this from, and uh, this particular seller had these little rinky dink antennas on the back there, and you saw another seller, even if that other seller was asking, say, £50 more for their unit, and uh, you compare the two you'd look at those antennas and think oh no i'm going to go because essentially it is a wireless unit i mean you can hardwire these over LAN, but you're buying it because you want it to be wireless so you'd look at that and say oh no i'm going to get this one it's got bigger antennas on it's bound to be a lot better than uh, the one with a little rinky dink antennas on maybe i should email johnny and let him know so if you did enjoy the video please give it a uh, thumbs up comments or questions drop them below and as i've shown you it should be a pretty straightforward upgrade to do this no soldering involved no special tools just a phillips screwdriver and away you go so if you did enjoy the video please give it a thumbs up and hopefully you'll join me on the next one